As far as Carmichael, there was little hesitation in his voice when asked about the opener here in Indianapolis. Last year, I kind of didn't use my head, and uh, I'm just going to try to come out and win my heat race, start the year off good, and uh, try to win that main event. i got to focus on the whole shot, because if I can get that whole shot, it's going to be my race. You know, uh, it's a long off season, like I said earlier, and uh, I've been putting a lot of time and effort into it and finding out what I did wrong last year. So uh, if I get that whole shot, man, I think I can pull it off. Ricky Carmichael out on the track surveying the situation, David Bailey, as we take a look at the Suzuki starting grid. It's like a warm-up lap these guys get before they go out. Tracks changed a lot since their heat races, and they used to just ride around the track. Well, now, since they don't give them a time limit, they take it all and try to check out anything that can help them in the main. This is a pivotal first round for the 125s in the Eastern Division because in 13 years of 125 Eastern racing, 10 of those times, the winner of the first round has gone on to win the title. Let's go down to Marty. Well, guys, you were talking about Ricky Carmichael. In his heat race, I talked to Chad Watts. He's the odds-on favorite for the championship, and everybody said, hey, listen, keep an eye on this guy because he's going to drive his own race. He's going to try and do it in a style so that he doesn't end up taking himself out of the championship. It's his championship to lose, and he did exactly what they wanted him to in that heat race. What I find interesting is Carmichael's going to line up right down here on the inside, right by the doghouse. But come on down here because the other competitor that we all think that is going to be the top guy is Robbie Rayner. And look where he's lining up all the way to the outside. David Bailey, a big gamble here for one of them. Well, Carmichael's going to have to get a great jump to come from the middle of the starting line where Rayner is actually, it's the outside, depending on how you look at it, actually going down the straightaway with the left-hand first corner. He's all the way to the inside. I used to kind of like to favor the inside of the start. That way, if it didn't come out too good, everything would get pushed wide and it could still come out okay. But he doesn't get a good jump right there. Number 41 and Nick Way right there, number 67, can close him off. And he'll be mid-pack before he even gets to the corner. Okay, it's get nervous time now for the 125s. And these guys from the East, David Bailey, have waited a long time. Many of them working out, getting ready with the 125 West some six weeks ago. They've been pumped all this time. It's awful. I've been watching all the, the races on TV and seeing it in Cycle News and going, God, I just need to get my turn. And you got to bet Carmichael's been a little bit nervous, like a little animal waiting to be let out of a cage because this kid is aggressive. But in the heat race, he was pretty contained. He did what he had to do, rode very smart. And the crowd starting to feel the tension now of the main event. 52,784, a new RCA Dome record here in Indianapolis. The checkout, the start of the 125 East Division. They're taking plenty of time as the 30-second board is now up. When that goes sideways, they'll have from 5 to 10 seconds. They don't know when. The guy in the doghouse will flip the switch, and the gate will fall. One nice thing about being right next to that starter's box, or what they call the doghouse, there you see the guy in there with the AMA shirt. He'll drop that gate. Carmichael's got all that room of that doghouse until the guy to his right when they come across the gate. So if he makes a little bobble or the guy next to him, he's at least got a little elbow room to his right. Good point, David Bailey. It was John Dowd, one of his two wins last year, who won this event in the uh, 125 East. The card is sideways. Let's see how number six gets out of the gate. They're off. Rainer to the inside. But once again, a good start by Gregory Rand. 163 like he did in his heat race. Coming out of the first turn, it is bar to bar. Rand and number 583, Derek Shane Bentley. Two triple digits out in front with Rainer and Ricky Carmichael bar to bar right in back of him. So it looks like Carmichael's going to come out ahead. Now they're going to be side by side, right behind the leaders, all the way down the straightaway. Carmichael reaching for a tear off in the air, almost runs into the back of Rand. Just great reflexes to sneak through there. Carmichael battling in third now. That's a risky place to reach up and clear his vision. Derek Shane Bentley from Ellenwood, Georgia. Number 583 is the next target for Ricky Carmichael. Right behind Ricky, though, is Robbie Rayner. He's got great speed and can come back. Here comes Rayner. Oh, my goodness, and Carmichael leaps into second place. 
Well, if you don't jump the triple on a 125, Carmichael's going to do it and jump right over the top of you. This kid is so aggressive. He's going to go for it. Gregory Rand of Hillsboro, Ohio, in first place, jumped both of those triples going into the corner. Carmichael already got a look at this kid, Rand, in the heat race. Passed him a couple of times. Well, I think he knows how to deal with him. If that was Rayner, to be a little different story. Bentley goes down. That gives a clear chase for Robbie Raynard in third. Moving into fourth is John Perolio. So now what you're going to see is Rayner coming from behind, which I think he does a little bit better than starting out front. A lot of problems with arm pump last year. And this time Rand doesn't go for the triple. Carmichael does, and there's the gap. It's getting close. Carmichael, a little more patient this year. He was 19th here last year with a bad start in 13th and then crashed with Sellers. Well, if he's going to be a little bit too patient, number 21, Brainerd is right back there behind him, looking aggressive. Rose, I thought a little bit more confident and aggressive of the two in the heat races. Taking a different line in the whoops. Here comes Ricky Carmichael. RC to the inside. RC's got the angle. Rainer cuts in. Oh, buddy. Well, I didn't think there was any room for that. I think he had to tuck his elbows in to make that work. That'll give Carmichael a little bit of time to pull away in case Rainer can't get around Rand right away. And already, just behind Carmichael, these guys both had to go for the double. That gives him a little lead. So it's 54.1 seconds, David Bailey. I think that's going to get faster. A lap time for Ricky Carmichael now as he tries to pull away. Robbie Raynard holding on, wants to stay close. Beautiful shot of Raynard around that burn, just laid it over, almost dragging the handlebar. It's Gregory Rand in third, and in fourth now is Casey Lytle, Honda of Troy, number 33. But right now you see the two contenders. Oh, getting pretty close. Robbie Raynard looking for his advantage now. The Oklahoma lad cuts in front. Saw that coming. He takes the lead from RC. I don't think Carmichael expected him to really felt him that close, but I can go out here and use the outside, and you have to. If you got a little bit of a lead, you got to go out there and get a run at the double out of the corner. Boy, would this be an upset as we take a look at the mechanics area. I think Rainer's mechanic is happy with the rhythm he's got out there. He's saying, cool rhythm, keep it going. Uh, Carmichael, I'm Rainer. sorry, Art. Carmichael's going to have to answer this challenge because already he's starting to lose a little time. Rainer with good practice times, I was going to say, David, and uh, really looked consistent in his practices. He only had four podiums last year, three of those second places. No wins. And really, though, with the exception of a 12th in Minneapolis and a very poor east-west shootout in Las Vegas, he had a good season. Uh, I know he'd like to better it. Starting out pretty good right here. There's a couple ways to look at Carmichael's performance so far, and that is hey, anything would be better than last year's finish. Just get on the podium and then get comfortable and tear him up for the rest of the races. The Suzuki leaderboard with Rainer Carmichael, Rand Lido, and Perolio. The race to the checkers for the 125 East continues when we return to the RCA Dome. Here is our leader in the 125 main, David Bailey. Number 21, Robbie Rainer. Another way to look at this strategy of, of Carmichael, it does look like he's starting to pick up the pace a little bit. In the first couple of laps, it looked as though Rainer was a little faster and was going to pull away. About a two-second interval right now between 21 and number six. The 52-second lap times right now is what Rainer's running. He only went for the double. Car Carmichael tripled it. On the stopwatch, let's check out the intervals now with your favorite rider. Also, we get a good, accurate lap time out of this. What Carmichael can't do is give Rainer any confidence. Lytle going by. Perolio is next. This really sets the stage for the season for these guys. It's gonna, it looks like it's going to be between Rainer and Carmichael. And if RC can make this pass, he'll really make a statement. He won't let Rainer have any confidence built up in his first round. Last year was arm pump problems for Rainer. And that's usually due to nerves. Nine laps to go. Rainer, Carmichael, Lytle, Sellers, Perolio, and Deegan, our lineup. Here with the 125 main event. Coming up to the triple again. The last time Rainer only doubled it. 
knows he's got to go for it this time. And the reason they're doubling it hard is because the face of that jump is rutted so bad. Robbie Raider, number 21, right on his tail is Ricky Carmichael. Let's go down to Marty Reed. Chad, we talked about the fact you wanted him to run a conservative pace, not lose the race, but I don't think this is what you expected this late into the race, is it? Well, actually, it don't surprise me a bit, because I know how fast Rainer can be. He can never underestimate the kid. So uh, right now, Ricky's doing what I want him to. I want him to stay behind him and pressure him, and hopefully a Rainer will make a mistake or get tired. All right, there you got it, guys. Look out, here comes RC. RC at the halfway point of the race. And he's right there. Raynard warmed up, as we mentioned, with some 250 action earlier. Look at RC going for the triple. Ricky Carmichael back in the lead. Oh, it's gonna be a back and forth duel all the way, I have a feeling. Well, what Carmichael had to do right there is approaching the triple, not follow, because if Raynard didn't go for it, he had to be able to keep the throttle on, make the pass, then he drifted over that inside berm out into Raynard's line to make that pass stick. It's not dirty riding, just protecting the line. Two bike lanes. Now down to one bike link. Robbie Rader, number 21. Very careful during this important rhythm whoop section. Seeing a lot more maturity this year from Carmichael. He was content to let Rainer get around, study his lines, learn as much as possible, then make the pass. Be interesting to see if he can pull away now. Checking it out. Here's the pass. Rainer only going for the double, and I think that's due to the rut. If you don't get the right rut, your bike sinks in there deep. Carmichael went for it, then he drifted out into the line. That's not the fastest line when you're running by yourself, but to make that pass stick, he had to go out there. Carmichael has moved it out to a five-back lead. What does Ricky expect from himself in 1998? This was his comment. For, for myself, I expect to win the East Coast. You know, I, I put in a lot of time and effort, and so has the team, and I know I can do it. You know, it's just it's up to me, and uh, I've done all the work for sure, and I know, I know some people are expecting me to win it, and I should be able to. So we're just going to play it by ear, and hopefully I won't have a problem. Ricky Carmichael with a soft confidence. He's a, just a kid. You know, it's amazing the success he's had already. Everybody expected him to come out of the amateur ranks and just dominate. He didn't do it indoors. He learned a lot, went outdoors, and did dominate. Now he wants to prove to everybody he can do it in the Supercross. Robbie Reeder made a very good point before the race, saying that with Sheik not in the uh, field as a contender for the points race, it'll make it easier. Here comes Reeder to the inside. Reeder to the inside on right. Ricky Carmichael, what a job of riding by these two. And leaping back into the lead is RC. Ted Watson, race the track. Go for it. That was weird, Art. I don't understand. Carmichael reached up off the finish line jump. Looked like he was trying to fiddle with something on his face. And when we get a close shot, looks like his helmet strap is hanging down. I don't know if that's loose and messing with his concentration, but he just rode to the outside of that corner. Pretty much gave the lead to Rainer. Rainer to the inside, tries a similar move, but he can't get any thrust out of the corner. We're coming into lappers now. The blue flag with the diagonal yellow line is out. Please make room for the leaders, they're saying. Robbie Rayner trying to catch up now with Carmichael as Carmichael has taken about an eight-bike lead. We'll see the checkers fly when we come back to the RCA Dome. Casey Lytle in third place. Getting overshadowed by all the attention up front, but Casey Lytle is actually putting together a pretty good race. Casey, Honda of Troy out of California, won the pre-qualifying heat, and the white flag is out. Carmichael, Raynard, Lytle, Sillard, Perolio, and Smith. And Carmichael's got a couple of triples and a great big finish line plateau to put that bike upside down. This kid can throw it so sideways in the air. It's really fun to watch. It is rookie 125 season last year. Three super cross victories, but suffered from some crashes the title going to the consistent Tim Ferry, who did not win a race all year. Carmichael, though, was told by his mentor, Mitch Payton, don't worry about it. Make all your mistakes in this first rookie year in your 125 season. Then go out and win the title the next year. Boy, what a way to start off. One more jump. 
Ricky Carmichael, number six. The checkers! And a lot of pressure has just been taken off this young man's shoulders as he starts a career that looks like might be one of the legends of this game if he continues on court. Ricky Carmichael has won the first round of 125 East action right here in the RCA Dome in Indianapolis, Indiana. Marty Reed makes his way over to the victory podium. We'll hear those comments as he gets together with Carmichael and Drew right after this. On way to victory, Ricky Carmichael in his battle with Robbie Rayner, David Bailey. This is an odd place of the race. Carmichael going wide on purpose there, looking over, knowing Rayner was there, and then jumping right back by him for the lead on the triple. In just his second year of 125 action, Ricky Carmichael has captured his fourth 125 Supercross victory. It was Carmichael, Raynard, and Casey Lytle, a very good job from the Honda of Troy rider getting on the podium, followed by Brock Sellers and Danny Smith, who is racing for no points as he started out in the 125 West. So that's the top five, and as we take a look now at six through 10, I'm sure Marty Reed is anxious to ask Ricky Carmichael a few questions, Marty. Yeah, we've got Ricky and Robbie and everybody down here. First off, uh, th the race looked like a big difference from last year. When you got past last year, you became too aggressive. This time, you sort of let the race come back to you very patient. Yeah, I got a pretty good start, and uh, I knew that I would be strong all the way through the moto. And, uh, you know, last year, I, if I wasn't at first, you know, I was bonsai. And uh, I learned from my mistakes last year, and uh, I rode a good race. And I'm just proud that I just didn't blow my head, you know, like I used to, I used to do last year. And, uh, I'm really happy with myself this weekend. Were you surprised at how strong Robbie was early in the go there and how long he stayed with you? Well, I knew he was going to be good. You know, he's a good rider. I've been watching him ever since I was a little kid. And, uh, you know, he's a really good rider, and he's going to be up there all series. So I just got to know that he's going to be fast. Well, let's slide on over and talk to the man who finished in second place. And I think, I, you know, I meant, made a comment that you were running out of gas. I think somebody may have thought you were, I was saying fuel, but it was physically. You looked like you were pumping up. Uh, I just when I got out front I started worrying about Ricky behind me instead of just focusing ahead and you can't do that you can't worry about the person behind you you just got to focus ahead and I just started losing my concentration out there and I, and I started like just like just get riding tight and I don't know I'm a little bit upset because I know I can ride the full the full amount without no problem but I just wasn't thinking well the nice part is this is only round one yeah i know that it's a long season so i'm just gonna try to be consistent and get a good start like every race and just try to do the best i can well guys we'll find out next week at atlanta at least david bailey uh robbie raynard is really close there and should something happen to carmichael and uh, carmichael might come through in the next round as we move on to round two of the 125 east in atlanta georgia ricky carmichael as we see on the suzuki point standings has that three-point edge going to the next round. So as the celebration continues for the 125 podium winners, the question now is, can Lusk, LaRocco, Wyndham, can anybody derail Jeremy McGrath's winning streak? 